In this video, I'm going to share a step-by-step -step guide on how to write the contributions of your study with some practical examples. Following this approach, you will impress the examiners, reviewers, and readers of your work. The contribution of research is usually reported in chapter one of your thesis, dissertation, or your research report. The contribution of your research needs to be very well aligned with your research objectives and research gaps of your study, and usually is written after conducting the literature review of your work. The contribution of the study needs to clearly specify what the current study creates beyond what is already known, or specifically what the study adds to the current body of knowledge. This means that you first need to demonstrate that you have a very good understanding of the current body of knowledge. Otherwise, how you can claim that you are adding something to the body of knowledge? So first, you need to do a comprehensive literature review. Second, identify and highlight the research gaps. And third, you can state the contributions of your research by explaining what your research adds to the literature. Please keep this in mind that you never can claim that you have reviewed all literature, all past studies. Who knows, maybe you have missed some important studies, or maybe there are some papers that very recently have been published and you have not included them in your literature review. So when you write the statements of your contributions, be a bit cautious and use statements such as, to the best of researchers' knowledge, there are few studies on this topic, rather than strongly saying that there is no research on this topic. Generally, the contributions of a study can be theoretical, practical, and or methodological. Some researchers may report all in one section, and some consider separate headings for each of these categories. A theory is a system of constructs and relationships between those constructs to explain a phenomenon within some assumptions. Theories are not laws, and they need to be tested in different contexts. They are always subject to change as new evidence is discovered. The three main groups of theoretical contributions in quantitative studies include confirmation or replication, further explanation, and extension or integration. Let's review them one by one. The first group of theoretical contributions is confirmation or replication. As mentioned, theories need to be tested in different settings and contexts. So one of the theoretical contributions can be testing a theory and investigating the relationships specified in the theory and replication. This is to test to what extent a theory is valid in different contexts. There is usually a large body of research established on testing a theory. So to replicate these studies and to retest a theory, you need to have a strong justification. You should explain why you need to conduct such a study again. Why do you think you might get different results by testing the theory in this new context? And why can't you use the results of past studies and answer your research questions? And what makes this setting or context unique? One of the most common justifications for replication and testing a theory or some relationships in a new context is the lack of research in that context. For example, researchers claim that few studies or no studies have been conducted in that context. Or they state, for example, there is a large body of research on the relationships between A and B in developed countries. However, little is known about this relationship in, for example, Malaysia. But this is not a very convincing justification for allocating resources to do research. We need to explain what makes this context, in this example, Malaysia, unique from the lens of the relationships or the theory that we want to test. We can't just summarize the characteristics of Malaysia, for example, from Wikipedia or maybe some articles, and then claim that this is a unique context and we need to conduct this study in this context because this provides a good setting for our study. We need to explain why we might not be able to answer the research questions in Malaysia using the findings of past empirical studies. I have a detailed video on the context of this study. I strongly recommend you to watch this video to have a very good understanding on how to justify the replications of a study in a new context. I posted the link of this video in the description below. The second group of theoretical contributions is further explanation. Indeed, no theory is perfect and further research is needed to provide more clarity about the relationships specified based on a theory. For example, theory of reason action or theory of planned behavior explain the relationship between attitudes and intention. Thousands of studies have tested this relationship in different contexts. Now we may conduct a new study to understand how or why this relationship exists. In quantitative studies, this can be examined by including a mediator or moderator variable in the model. We may also conduct a qualitative study to deeply understand the mechanism behind this relationship. 
You may state that there is a large body of research on the relationship between A and B. However, little is known about the mechanism behind this relationship. Make sure you support your statement on the large body of research with several references and review papers. For example, see my article published in the Journal of Advanced Nursing. I've posted the link to this article in the description below. To highlight the contribution of the study, we first demonstrated that we are aware of the current studies. We stated that empirical studies on the relationship between nurse practice environment with nurses' quality of care and satisfaction are abundant in the literature. Then we supported this statement with several references. Next, we highlighted the gap in the literature. We stated that, however, despite the plethora of studies on nurses' perceptions of sufficient organizational support and its effect on nurse outcome, little is known about the underlying mechanism behind this association. And then, we clearly stated that our contribution is introducing a mediator to the relationship between work environments and nurses' quality of care and job satisfaction. So we followed a three-step approach that I explained earlier. First, we demonstrated that we are aware of the current body of knowledge. Second, we highlighted the gaps in the literature. Third, we clearly presented the contributions of our study, and we showed how we are filling the gap by conducting this study. Another approach, which is my favorite approach, is referring to the contradictory results of past studies. For example, some studies may have reported a positive relationship between A and B, and some studies may have found a negative relationship between A and B, and others may have reported they couldn't find any significant relationship between these two constructs. The inconsistency between the results of past studies might be a very good example to replicate the study in a new context to understand the reason behind the mixed results. Indeed, the inconsistency between the results may indicate that this relationship works in certain contexts and settings. So we aim to provide more clarity to the relationships between the constructs and improve our understanding of the mechanism behind this relationship. We aim to know how or in which conditions this relationship works. For example, it may work only for certain groups of people, like men or international students or those with higher level of education, or in certain cultures or countries. Let me show you one of my papers. You can find the link to this article in the description below. In this paper published in Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion, we highlighted the contradictory results of past studies on the effect of gender diversity of the board of directors on companies' performance and introduced a new variable as the moderator to the model to test the relationship in different contexts. As you can see, we reviewed the literature and demonstrated that we are aware of the current body of knowledge. More specifically, we highlighted the mixed results of past studies by grouping them into three categories. Studies that found a positive relationship and could support the hypothesis, studies that couldn't find any relationships, and studies that found a negative relationship. And we provided several references for each group of studies. Next, we explained the need for further study to understand when, how, and under which condition board diversity improves firm performance. And finally, the third group of theoretical contributions is extension or integration. As we discussed, theories do not fully explain a phenomenon or concept. To improve our understanding of a concept like attitudes, intention to purchase, quality of life, and satisfaction, or to better understand the process that explains these concepts, you may integrate two or three theories or models in your research model. By the way, don't use too many theories to support your model or hypothesis. As a rule of thumb, I don't recommend using more than three theories to support your model or hypothesis unless you have a very good justification for that. You may also extend the theory or model by adding more variables or constructs to what has been already developed and tested. One of the very good examples is a paper that we have published in International Journal of Human-Computer Interaction. You can find the link to this paper in the description below. The title of the paper is Online Financial Trading Among Young Adults, Integrating the Theory of Planned Behavior, Technology Acceptance Model, and Theory of Flow. Yes, you can state your contribution in the title of your study too. As you can see, a big part of the introduction section highlights the contributions of this study. We stated that the present study contributes to the understanding of the mechanisms that govern consumers' use of online financial trading by combining theory of planned behavior, technology acceptance model, and theory of flow. Further novelty of this study stems from exploring theoretical extensions of the three theories by incorporating a greater number of factors as the antecedents of these theories compared to former work in this regard. So we clearly stated that our contribution is integrating and extending theories. Now let's move on to the practical contributions. 
Practical contributions are about the real impact of your research and how your study helps to solve a problem in practice. So you need to explain the specific need or the problem that your research tries to address in the real world setting. What's the significance of your research to policymakers, people's lives, society, community, or other researchers? Yes, this is very similar to the practical implications of your work, but don't worry about the reputation of your work in different parts of your thesis or your research report, because you need to discuss the same content sometimes from different angles for different purposes in different sections of your work. One of the most effective methods of writing about your practical contributions would be looking at your research from commonly used impact frameworks, such as, for example, Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. For example, explain how your research would reduce poverty, hunger, and equalities, or how it may improve good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry and innovation, and so on. Spend some time to read more about SDGs and see how you can link your research to any of these goals. The third group of the contributions is methodological contributions. Please this keep in mind that methodological contributions are usually seen as complementary and they do not substitute for theoretical contributions. Methodological contributions are about using new methods, processes, designs, data sets, and methodological advances to address an empirical challenge. For example, you may use structural equation modeling to test a model or some relationships that have been already tested using regression analysis in past studies. Another example is using secondary data to test a relationship that has been tested using survey and questionnaire data before. Let's have a look at one of our papers published in Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. You can find a link to this article in the description below. In this paper, we use PLSSCM method to test a very well-established relationship between perceived service quality, perceived value, and customer satisfaction using the data that we obtained from TripAdvisor. So we claim that we are using a new method and a new data set to test these relationships that had been already tested in many past studies. As you can see, we stated that no study has applied this data analysis technique to analyze the relationships between these variables using the data obtained from online travel agent platforms. We then claim that this is a valuable contribution to the tourism and hospitality literature. Comparing different methods and methodologies in your study and exploring their advantages and limitations or comparing the results can be a methodological contribution too. One more example for methodological contributions is developing a new construct to measure a concept. For example, you may develop a new construct to measure body image, religiosity, or quality of life. By the way, methodological contributions are not considered usually sufficient to conduct a study, especially if it's a research thesis or dissertation. If you insist on introducing your methodological contribution as the main contribution of your research, I suggest framing your methodological contribution as something that leads to new empirical and theoretical insights. Try to show how your methodological contribution can add an extension to theory and knowledge. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. I provided the link to the articles that I use as examples in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated about my future videos on research and publication.